National Hurricane Center at 11 p.m. Eastern Time declared that Lorenzo had reached Category 5 status. Our estimate still a little bit lower than that at 155 miles per hour, pressure of 934 millibars. We'll show you why in just a moment, 24.3 north, 44.7 west. Our satellite system uh, saw at 10.30 p.m. Uh, looking at the estimated winds in six different parts of the eye wall. Gathering a uh, wind speed there, generally 140s to 150s, and looking at the eye there, 10 degrees earlier on. And overall, the estimate this is how we conduct Satid, reaching 152 miles per hour. Recently uh, reached a peak of 158 just before that, uh, but overall, those numbers have been much lower, and that's why we've stayed with Category 4 status. All the other information on this update remains very much the same apart from the position estimate. It's a stage 5 on the CDPS, could be devastating for the Azores no matter what intensity it is right now. And looking at the wind field it currently looks like that, uh, 24.3 north as I say, 44.7 west. That's as of 4am UTC this September 29th. 13.07 miles from Flores in um, the Azores, 13.67 from Horta. 14.25 from Tercera, 14.61 from Ponta Delgada, and 26.93 from Cork in Ireland. Looking at the forecast over the next seven days, rainfall expectations to reach the westernmost islands of the Azores. Still the forecast calling for the track just to be slightly west of the westernmost islands, keeping the maximum rain rates just offshore as well. So the Azores could get away with just an inch or two of rainfall, but if the storm does deviate a bit further east, we could be looking at three or more. Sea surface temperatures ahead of the storm at this point, around 27 degrees Celsius for a good day or so. Um, so a few more hours for this storm to show us what it's made of. And this is again a forecast of the wind field over the next few days, moving more decidedly towards the northeast as we enter the new week, and then bypassing the Azores by the time we get towards the middle to the end of the week. Look how much that wind field expands. Could still be a Category 2 with 100 mile per hour winds by the time it reaches the Azores and could deliver hurricane force winds to more than one island. And then it will continue on towards the northeast. The threat to Western Europe I wouldn't say is particularly large because the storm is likely to weaken substantially before it arrives there. Probably going to be a typical extratropical cyclone. Uh, the models aren't really worth looking at at this point. Even if it's 155 rather than 160, they are way behind the curve. Wind shear is going to remain marginal around 20 knots or so. That will drop a little bit tomorrow. Sea surface temperatures remaining warm for another two days. And looking at the track forecast, there is deviation beyond the Azores as to where exactly the storm may go after that. Looking at satellite imagery then this evening, there's no doubt that the storm has looked extremely good on the latest satellite frames. The eye temperature briefly reached 16 degrees Celsius. The National Hurricane Center pulled the trigger, called it a Category 5. We disagree with that. Uh, we don't think that it had a good enough appearance for long enough, namely about 10 minutes rather than the two hours necessary for it to be a Category 5 storm, according to the satellite estimates. But that's what they went with in their analysis. I personally think they've made a mistake. Uh, whether everyone else thinks that or not remains to be seen. But there is the storm imagery, thankfully, uh, whether it was a Category 5 or not doesn't matter very much because the storm does remain out at sea at this point. It will weaken before it arrives in the Azores, and by then it may still have winds of over 100 miles per hour. That is something we've really got to be watching out for as we continue to track Lorenzo. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com. You can also find our YouTube channel if you're not there already. You may well be. Good chance of that. Subscribe if you haven't. You can also find our Facebook page, search Force 13 all in text, and our Twitter handle, it's at Force 13 on there. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our discord server underneath this video in the description.